your favorite apps and turn it into your own app with your own customization oh, without snap. ever looking at a line of code. Okay, let's start with this example here. This is called... All right, before you get all overwhelmed and impressed and super excited, uh, there's some comments that this video left, you know, and there's some problems with Claude AI, and I'm going to show you how to overcome them because a lot of people are having issues following this video right here to turn a screenshot into a working app. So we're going to still watch this version, but let me help you guys. Um, okay, so somebody says in the comments, what am I missing here? When I try this, I get an apology uh, that I can't convert the screenshot into working apps. I tried it, but Claus says it doesn't have the capabilities of doing it. So it does have the capabilities, guys, and I'm going to show you how to overcome it. It says, I apologize, but I cannot directly provide full impl implementation code for you. All right, then somebody says, Claw flat out refused to create an app <laughs> from a screenshot so let's get into this video real quick and then i'm going to help you guys overcome this microsoft to do and i'll show you three examples in this video microsoft to do is a to-do list app that i've been using for many years but i want to actually customize it a little bit more there are a few things that i just don't like about it that i just want to enhance so and this is how you make big money if you go to the google app play store um uh, the google play store or the apple app Play Store, whatever you want to call it, uh, you'll notice there are a lot of similar uh, apps on those Play Stores, but people are able to become millionaires from them because they're customers of them. When you're a customer of something, you can see the bugs, you can see the grievances that people go through and what they, what problems they have, the complaints and everything. And all you can do, all you have to do is take the base line of that working app and fix those problems and come out with that version and people people will buy that one i'm gonna go ahead here and i'm gonna take a screenshot command shift four on my mac and we got a screenshot from it okay for this one we're gonna use claude.ai and we're gonna use claude 3.5 sonnet now i have the paid version that's gonna give me just more back and forth with that's another thing guys are you the ones that are complaining in the comments are you a freebie seeker do you have the paid version? Because these videos will tell you, oh, you ain't got to do, you ain't got to pay for nothing and all of that extra stuff just to get you to continue watching the video. But chances are you don't have full access to all of the features. You understand what I'm saying? Not saying you guys in particular in the comments don't, but if you don't have the paid version, make sure you have all the features before you go complaining that stuff don't work, all right? Claude more usage, but I do need to use 3.5 Sonnet here. The other models are just not going to do as good of a job. See? And right over here, I just need to upload that screenshot I took. So I'm going to click add content. Here's a super simple prompt. Turn this into a functioning app and send this out. Now it's going to write the code. We don't have to even look at the code. We don't have to worry about it. I'm going to see a visual display of what this turns into. And there it is. This is a preview of that code. So if you don't get a nice, preview, nice, nice. there is something in the settings menu on the bottom corner called artifact, which is going to give you a preview like this. I've covered it in different videos. And then Okay, so do you guys have artifact? See, a lot of the times you're watching the videos just to be entertained, but you're not taking notes, like full notes. You're trying to see the the uh, completed version of his app so you can ooh and ah. Are you paying attention to every single thing that he says in the com in the in his description? He says you need something called artifact if you're not seeing this over here, okay? I could see if everything is functioning properly. Right now there is a little bit of an issue. Let me just make sure I could check these things off. Maybe I want to cross this out because the screenshot doesn't know all the functionality of the to-do list app. It just kind of creates what it saw on that screenshot. So I had a few back and forth revisions, which on the left side, you just have to explain it just using plain English. Hey, when someone clicks this box, make sure this gets crossed off. Or when someone changes these categories here, make sure it starts a fresh list of to do's. And okay, so someone asks, can the same thing be done in chat GPT 4.0? Um, well, not yet. Okay, not yet. Yeah. Once you get it to work with a few back and forth prompts, you just have to press publish right over here and just press publish and copy. And this is going to create a URL that you could share with anyone or keep it to yourself. Let me show you an actual working to do list app that I made with about five different prompts 
to revise a few things. And here it is on this domain name that I could share with anyone. And it's working exactly like I want. So when someone okay, checks something nice. off here as the to-do list, it will go ahead and cross it off. They could press X okay. to remove it entirely right over here. You could actually select any one of these and assign a to-do here or a to-do date here. You could go ahead and repeat it, which I added with one prompt because the screenshot didn't have this functionality built out like this. And it's perfect. I could go ahead and add a new task over here and press enter. It's going to add it over here. I could check it off, assign a date. I'm just missing one functionality here, which there's no adding folder option. So I could add folders. And within that, it's going to have different to-do lists over here. But now I could customize it any which way. I could add more functionality. Okay. Obviously, if I use a product, off-the-shelf product from another company, I don't have this kind of control. And then I could share this with my team. This could be our shared to-do list app that is fully customized. Now, let me show you a couple more examples. Then I'll show you a tool that lets you actually take that code and publish it to your own domain. Okay, so do you guys have this tool that he's about to show us? Okay, so like I said, I know I'm nitpicking, but that's what you have to do when you watch videos, guys. If you're not paying someone for coaching, it's only so much that they can give you in a, what is this, nine minute video, right? He can't put his full experience and hand holding into a nine minute video. He can attempt to, but there's always gonna be questions left over or something left out. That's why I have the ability to be able to answer some of those because I'm pretty sure he didn't intentionally leave out things, guys. All right, so, you know, all the hate comments and stuff like that, chill out with all that. Um, anyway, let's go. If you wanna test out a brand new idea you have, now you could do it with Claude and publish it on a custom domain, not just this Claude URL. This is great for your internal tool, something personally that you're using for your team. Okay, let me now show you this option. This is just a new redesigned website that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a screenshot. Let me shrink down this website a bit right over here. This is just our website, skillleap.ai. And I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it down this much. And I'm gonna take a screenshot all the way from the top, all the way to over here. Okay. And then if I wanted to, I could take a second screenshot of kind of the rest of this website. Now I'm gonna say, turn this into code for my website. I took nice. a screenshot of my own website because sometimes it's gonna have copyright limitations. It's gonna tell you you can't do that because it's not your own website. But in this case, it was. Ah, we can't just fly past that, guys. <laughs> he might be answering some of y'all questions in the, in the comments, right? He just said, sometimes it will tell you it can't do it due to copyright reasons. It might not mention that uh that is copyright reasons but he just said that that could be one of the the one of the issues guys you might be screenshotting something that is copyrighted and uh won't be allowed to be like imitated and broken down through code of claude ai you see what i'm saying they're not trying to get in trouble by helping you plagiarize or or steal somebody else's work they're not trying to get in trouble so i'm pretty sure claude ai has parameters and limitations uh, that you can't pass if it's something that's copyrighted just so they can protect themselves from lawsuits. Y'all understand? So take all this stuff into consideration that we're learning right now. And after a couple of prompts to go back and forth to get what I want, this is what I got. It has a top menu here. It nice. has the same type of button style. It doesn't have the images because I actually have to upload those to some kind of a server. So okay. I could then use the link and put those in the code. Yes, and here good. it is in a brand new window. It looks excellent. It copied most of the colors. Obviously some of the functionality on my own website are much more advanced and it just can't do that. But for the most part, if this was just a static website without the animations, it looks pretty great. Yeah. So here's a screenshot yeah. I found online. And this is going to be great for people like me with subscription type businesses, with sats type businesses. I need a dashboard and I just need to give it this screenshot and any customer and user data I have. I typically remove the names and the emails so there's no sensitive kind of content that is getting uploaded. Just for security reasons, I'm sure it's fine with a paid version of Claude, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and upload that again as usual. And you would also upload any kind of data you have. You usually upload it as. Okay, so this is crazy. I don't even remember seeing this part of the video. See what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta watch something twice, right? Like movies, you will watch a movie and 
uh, you'll watch it again. And you'll be like, hold on. I don't even remember this scene right here. Did I go to the bathroom? Did I fall asleep for a minute or something? That's kind of how it is with these video tutorials and stuff like that, guys. Sometimes you got to watch them a couple times uh, to get the full you know, explanation of how stuff works. But this is cool as hell. So it's about to create a dashboard. Like, that's something I had problems with, like, with my affiliate network and everything like that. I had issues with the dashboard. So this can give you the code for a new damn dashboard. This is crazy. CSV, so you have it as Excel file, just save as CSV, and upload that and say create an interactive dashboard using this design with my own data. Now, I published this to a link, and look how nice this looks. And wow. it's completely interactive over here. That's and crazy. it looks like some things are That's not quite getting updated down here. So I'm going to need to go a couple of times back and forth. This is just the very first one that he gave me. You could also just sketch it out if you want to use like Figma or some other app to kind of sketch out your idea. See, that's what I'm saying. Look, you underestimate Claude. Somebody says this in the comments. You underestimate Claude. It doesn't just do screenshots. You can turn a drawing or a concept on paper into an app. He's literally saying this right here. So it lets me know that a lot of you guys don't even watch the full video. You just come on the video and skim through and then make assumptions and start going to the comments and complaining. You understand? That's crazy. He's literally telling you right now, oh, it doesn't just do the screenshots. But then you got some guy in the comments saying, you underestimate Claude. He can do drawings, too. <laughs> Guys, read all the way through. Watch all the way through when you're consuming content, okay, before you start attacking the creator. Y'all be mad when people don't upload nothing. Like, damn, he ain't uploaded in a while. I need help with this. But when people upload, y'all run to the comments and start talking stuff. Chill out idea use different shapes and different tools like that and then give it that screenshot you could totally do that and it'll turn it to a functioning app and once this is good to go i could share this with my team to show them what's going on this month or this year with our business using a much better format than what an excel sheet would give them and i'll quickly show you a more advanced tool this is really designed for developers but if you're a non-developer you could still talk to claude and he showed me the steps on how to deploy or basically publish this on my own domain. So Okay, so before we move on, I want to make sure that you guys get the assistance that you came here for so that you can know the reasons why it's refusing to help you turn this screenshot into a working app. You want to turn a screenshot into a working app, right? So listen up. All right, so there are five things that could be holding you back from turning this screenshot into an app. Um, number one is com complex visuals and ambiguity and be amb <laughs> ambiguity. <laughs> My bad, yeah, I just woke up. Screenshots can be visually complex and they don't contain the actual structural data needed to understand app functionality, okay? So it depends, guys. Maybe it's not any disclaimer with Claude AI or something, but it's not gonna work for every single screenshot that you do. Some stuff is just too complex, like he was saying, right? Uh, without explicit information about layout, logic, and interactive elements, the AI can't reliably interpret what each part of the image should do so since it can't spit it out you know as perfect as it wants to it might just say oh i can't do it <laughs> basically that's what that's saying now number two it could be this so you should be writing these things down if you're really trying to learn how to turn a screenshot into a website guys that's a skill right there you understand you can have a client point at uh, a site that they like or something like or, or an app that they like and you just screenshot it and then boom you can like like duplicate it right there boom so pay attention all right lack of code specific context uh screenshots usually don't include the back end logic apis of course apis or interactive behavior that uh, uh, an app relies on. For AI to build a working app, it needs more context about what each button, form, or image is meant to achieve. So remember, he was also uploading data. Like when he took a screenshot of, um, of the dashboard, like on that part of the video, when he took a picture of the uh, dashboard, he also uploaded customer data, remember? on the paid version are you guys doing that 
Like, are you uploading context and information about what you wanted to do? Or are you just taking the bare bones image and saying, yeah, now do this. See, see, go back and try it now. Okay. So number three, it says security and privacy risks. AI platforms sometimes avoid interpreting screenshots to avoid unintentionally processing private or sensitive information. He was just talking about that, which could be in text or visual form within the screenshot. Okay. Now watch this. Number four, number four training limitations. AI like Claude may not be specifically trained to perform complex OCR, that stands for optical character recognition, combined with app code generation based on screenshots alone. See, you guys are just bringing the screenshot by itself. And I know that's what the, the title of the video is, but you need to bring context. You need to upload data about the screenshot and what you want the app to do. Mm, you got to do that. OK, so it says this is a highly specific task typically handled by tools designed explicitly for OCR and code generation. So you might have to couple this uh, uh, Claude AI with another app. You might have to do that. OK, so if you ain't prepared for that, I'm sorry. All right. Technical restraints. Converting a screenshot into code involves uh, generating multiple code layers in HTML, CS, C, uh, CSS, JavaScript, um, and understanding the interactions between them. This is technically challenging, especially for a general purpose AI model and can lead to highly variable results. So remember, Claude AI is not specifically made for just your app that you're trying to work on so it's gonna like i said limitations is not going to be trained on certain things that the, that might be in the screenshot that you're uploading to it like it might be something in the screenshot that that cloud ai might might not have been trained on before so my suggestion would be for you to try multiple different types of screenshots some of you guys already did that so if you've already tried oh well i tried a whole bunch of different um screenshots it can't be just the um the copyright situation okay do you have the premium version okay so now try getting the premium version with different types of screenshots okay if that doesn't work what you want to do is upload data for context and what you want it to do there you go that's how you solve that problem